why don't we bring out our guest? Absolutely. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, from the county of Martin, the town of Fairmont, Ooh. we have, as our guest, Don Ashley. Oh, okay. Thank you for inviting me. Outstanding, yes. Um, Don, we know that you're involved in something very special. Could you tell us what it is and a little bit about it? Well, about 25 years ago, I had this brainstorm of doing kids' pedal tractor pulls. Really? And I was visiting with a lady in Welcome who was putting together a celebration, and she says, there's nothing for three, four, five, six-year-old kids to do mm -hmm. at a celebration that's, that's but true. a fish pond and an airbag and everything. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, well, if I put together a pedal tractor pull, will you book it? Well, we're going to be doing the 25th year in Welcome this summer. Really? Oh, she's been with, the Welcome's been with me all 25 years I've been in this oh. business. So that's how it came about. Wow. And I know this is going to sound very ignorant of me, but I have to ask, what you're speaking of with a pedal pull then is the small tractors that kid use, the kids use like a, almost like a tricycle or a bicycle. They, they sit on and, and pedal it. Correct. The kids and, are the motors. And then they do a pull, much like you would have the adults doing a real tractor pull. Uh, the, just like your antique tractor pulls and your super hot rod pulls and your pickup pulls. Oh. We miniature a skid. I was going to ask, what do they pull? We miniature a skid, and okay. it works on the same principle. And as they pull down the track, the weight gets up heavier pulling, and it's how far you can pull whatever weight's in the bucket. What are the competitive levels in the, in the pedal pull, and, and how do Minnesota kids do compared to others? I'm just curious. <laughs> well, we got some awesome kids in Minnesota, and we've had every year. I got thinking on that subject today. Uh, I've been helping with the National 23 years now. And in that 23... There is a National oh, yeah. Pedal Pull? Wow. Okay. In that 23 years, our Minnesota kids have ruled on the trophies. There's, on the first few years, there was about 54 trophies given, and we were bringing about 15 to 20 of them back to Minnesota. Last year, out of 96 trophies, we brought 31 back to Minnesota. Wow, that's wow. great. The closest state to us was Iowa with nine, and that just shows how competitive our kids. The national is held in Mitchell, South Dakota, at the Corn Palace. Okay. The kids have to win first, second, or third at a state level in order to go to the national. We had 54 kids eligible to go last year. 48 went and 31 trophies come back to Minnesota. That's great. Wow. And what levels of competition? By ages, We I pull by age. Okay. Four-year-olds pull against four, five against five, okay. six against six, up to 11. Up to 11 So years we have eight. I do, personally do, a fun pull for all those kids three and under. I oh, give them a ribbon. Oh, None of them really pedal, but oh. I push them five, six feet and get them used to the tractors. And I look at that, that's my future, you know. That's going to oh, be sure. my customers Absolutely. tomorrow. Absolutely. Yeah. And they, get, they have a good time. Do they? No, you, I just have to ask another question. You say it's national, the national <coughs> pool. How many states? There's 17 in our national organization. Hmm. Are you the only one that does a pedipole in this area? I have or? 14 pullers in the state of Minnesota that do sanctioned pulls here in Minnesota. Such as what you do? Such as I do. I'll be doggone. And um, they're all busy. Now you said sanctioned pulls. So yeah. there's a criteria that you have to meet. No one, well, I mean, Bobby Ray couldn't go get a bunch of pedipoles and <laughs> do it. He can sanction them, though, or he can't. <clears throat> Sanction means that the first and second place winner of that pull mm -hmm. can advance to the state. Is there anything special that a community has to do to become sanctioned? How do they no. become sanctioned? They send in $25 to me, and okay. then they get the forms, and they have to fill out the forms and send them back to me. So, Because that day up there, the kids that's the only time the kids have to show their birth certificate and proof of age. Okay. Uh, that and okay. the national. That makes they sense. have yeah, to. Um, the equipment that's used, how do people acquire this equipment? Yeah, is it special? Do they have to have certain types or? Well, there's some things, like your tractors have to have both wheels tied as a positive traction, otherwise it pulls oh, off sideways. On, okay. You couldn't just okay. take anybody's tractor and bring it in. <clears throat> okay. And I learned that the hard way, because the first one I'd done wasn't that way, and, you know. I personally manufacture it and sell it. Um, really? And I've, on my fourth generation of skids, I, uh, my first skid worked so good, I built another one thinking I'd make it easier, and I made it harder. Then uh, about two years later, I developed the one I have now. And, uh, and what's really that made from? Down? Aluminum. Aluminum. I've got it down so the skid only weighs about 95 pounds. I'll be doggone. So it's very compact. I, I control how far the kids are going to pull and stuff uh, just because of the weight you put in. And my philosophy has been not how much weight they pull, 
but how little a weight it takes to stop them. So mm -hmm. my whole philosophy, and then I took, an, uh, instead of just putting a tractor out there, I started gearing and building my tractors for each age group. Okay. You know, I, don't, I don't build a tractor and say, I'm going to stick this in seven-year-olds. I build a tractor for seven-year-olds. Oh, uh, different because heights. Because they have, well, yeah. that, and they have different leg, leg Legs, lengths. Leg lengths, yeah. sure. Uh, but <laughs> different gear ratio. Mm -hmm. A seven-year-old is okay. more powerful than a six-year-old, so I gear it up a little more, so they're going to work harder. An 11-year-old is They're probably going to use yep. the same energy as a six-year-old done, but it's done through gearing. That makes sense. And I've discovered when I've done that, I discovered for every gear I change, I take 50 pounds out of the box. Wow. So how far do you travel to do these pedal pulls? Well, last year I clocked 27,000 miles. My oh, goodness. Wow. I wear a vehicle out every four years. My do goodness. Do you have a boundary or where you go wherever? I haven't found that boundary yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a mileage charge and a fee, <laughs> and if, if the money comes and stuff. Sure. I, was, I did have a phone call last year from Stewart, Florida. The Martin County Fair down there wanted me. Oh. Uh, Martin County. They have a Martin County They have County a Martin County there? Fair. Really? They had called up here and got my name from the Martin County Fair out here. But I didn't go. It was in February. Uh, <laughs> Six, yeah. 1,600 miles from Fairmont to wow. Stewart. Wow. Back to the equipment, I've sold equipment as far away as Virginia. Uh, I've had people call me on my equipment, you know. When I first came out with a skid I used now, everybody laughed at it, but I, every year I get three or four people come by. I have uh, one guy, he called me up one day and his skid was broken and wanted to know if he could borrow one, so I loaned him one. Monday morning he calls me up and says, Don, you, I thought you were my friend, but he says, I know after this you're not. And I said, why? I helped you out this weekend and everything? And you're telling me I'm not your friend? He says, you knew the minute I used your skid, I'd have to have one. So <laughs> he says, can you have me two of them by the end of the summer? So that's, that's I had good. to build him two skids. That's great. <laughs> you have any, you have any uh, success stories of kids that you'd like to share? Anything that's, that pops into your mind? Well, every year I get a success story. And sure. that's what makes us so happy. And I guess the reason I look so forward to doing this is because every year I have the success story. Uh, every year I've helped somebody... I'll tell you the first one that we ever have happened was out here in the Fair Mall parking lot, the first year we ever done mm -hmm. the state poll. The girl was about seven years old. She was from Monogamy, Minnesota. She come up to my wife, and she says, uh, she won first place. Okay. She come up to my wife, she says, uh, she stuttered. And she says, M Mrs. Oxley, she says, at school all the kids laugh and make fun of me every day. Oh. And when they have a sporting event, they never pick me. Oh. But tomorrow, when I show them this first place trophy, oh. they're not going to laugh at me. Oh. Today, she's an RN. Oh. oh it changed wow. her grade around. It changed that's her whole attitude around. And, you know, it just she went. Successful. That's outstanding. She won something, you know. And she went on to be a state wow. champion that time. She went on to be a national champion also. Outstanding. Then uh, the center, the dad, um, he... Uh, he I would come up, my wife always filled out the forms and he would sign and, and he told me, he said, the girls like doing this, but the, they've never won. I said, well, one of these days they're going to win one and you're not going to stop these girls. <laughs> and Ooh. sure enough, one of them got a third place trophy at one of the pulls I'd done. Because this, oh. this parent brought them to several pulls within uh -huh. and probably a sure. 50 mile radius sure. of where they lived. Yeah. And pretty soon they became very dominant in their age and they went on to win the national Isn't and everything awesome. else. And both of these girls went from being D students in school to A students and today are in the nursing field also. Outstanding. Oh, they Those work are, with. That's great. Then I don't know how you do anything better the than The last one that I have uh, bring up, we had a young gal that started pulling with us. Her grandpa and grandma brought them to us. And uh, she took third place at the state and she couldn't go to national because only first and second at that time could go to national. Well, the first place backed out of going that one to go, so that opened it up for third place. But we're three days from going to the national now. Ooh. And my wife says, oh, I'm not going to call them because they won't go. I said, well, you don't call the parents. You call grandpa and grandma. Grandpa sure. and grandma lived in Absolutely. Albert Lee. Absolutely, sure. We called yeah. grandpa and grandma, and grandpa and grandma says, she'll be there. <laughs> and she went on. And anyway, she went on, and after she, when they turned 12, they can't do it anymore. Right. Well, she went into the softball league in the Minneapolis softball deal. Her team took first place because she was a pitcher, and she, her mother says, we, ca we uh, tell everybody it's because of the pedal poles because she's so calm on the mound. She tunes out everybody, anything, and she pitched 
to the championship sure. of the city league. That's yeah. really good. And that was the reason she was so co cool and calm on the mic. That's cool. Now, how would someone, if they wanted to schedule you, how would they get uh, a Yeah, how they you? go about that? Well, you can call me at, uh, at 235-5026, area 507, or go on to uh, my email is dspedalpools at bevcom.net. And uh, get a hold of me that way. And, nice. Okay. So... Well, Don, it's been a pleasure to have you here today. It's exciting to know that there are those types yes. of events for children when a lot of times there aren't a lot of things for children. You should be very proud and very gratified by what's taking place. We are, and we had an honor this year. The fair board, uh, state fair board, give out two friends of the fair every year. And we were the recipient this year, really? and uh, one of the comments the guy made presented to it, there's been no one act that's been booked 25 years into the same fair and we do the Martin County Fair this year for the 25th year. Well, good? Sally Sue, I think we've got something to go and watch this year. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. I would like It'd to see. To I'd see. like to see the kids do that. Mm -hmm. That would be. I great. would like to invite you to our state poll. And that is in, in Hutchinson in September 11th in Hutchinson. Gentlemen, before we go. Yes. I think it's time for oh, one of our most another. popular mm -hmm. segments, and you both would love it. Yes. Yes. It's called the Memoirs of a Librarian. <laughs> You know, Sally, the way you say that, I really want to go to the library. But there you go. Well, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Okay. Would you like to learn more about a community you're visiting? Then stop into their library. Hello, I'm Caroline, a librarian who's doing research for my book, Memoirs of a Librarian. No huge city library can compare with the coziness of the small town libraries in southern Minnesota, with their rich history and commitment to providing information and entertainment to their patrons. Today we'll be visiting the town of... The Fulda Reading Club was organized in 1898 and shortly thereafter established in an informal library in Fulda. At first, the books were kept on a shelf in the Anderson Variety Store. Over the years, the library has expanded into the Fulda Memorial Library, moving into its current location in 1970. The Friends of the Fulda Memorial Library Group was formed in 1997 with the purpose of raising funds to expand the current library building. In 2002, the library expanded into a space about double the size of the original building. A member of the Plum Creek Library System, the library has 16,000 print items, 1,500 audiovisual items, and five public computers with free access to the Internet for patrons. With a yearly circulation of 34,000 items, the library has three part-time and two student staff members. The library also hosts summer reading programs for children and winter reading programs for adults. The Fulda Memorial Library is located at 101 3rd Street Northeast and is open Monday and Thursday, 12 o'clock noon to 6 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, 12 noon to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You may contact the library at 507-425-3277 during those hours, or check out the Plum Creek Library website at www.plumcreeklibrary.org. Well, this has been a wonderful experience, and I hope you visit this library soon. As for me, I'll be sure to include it in my book, Memoirs of a Librarian. Ah, now that, you have to admit, that was a great report. Yeah, darn right it was. Yes, I'm it impressed. Was. Yes. Well, you know, we want to thank Don for being our guest today. We'd also like to thank our viewers for watching the Cocklebur Morning Show. And, you know, as Sally Sue tries to say each time, <laughs> that's where we weed out the big stories from throughout Sweet Swine County. Right? Excellent. Excellent. Until next time, bye-bye.